Everything we see in movies is not the art of the absolute, but the art of the possible, given what the technology allows. Yes, movies are about ideas in, in terms of subject and narrative, but they're also about how you're actually going to make the thing. Steven Soderbergh's new film, Unsane. My stalker is here. He made this film with his iPhone. He was able to be a painter. He was able to move his hands freely around his characters. Yes. And that got us thinking about how technology has changed film and how film, in a way, has changed our understanding of technology. Madam, the only thing that seems to stand between you and romance is 100,000 francs. If you look at the comedies of Ernst Lubitsch, for instance, sound films gave him a quiet, calm balance so that very small gestures, like in Trouble in Paradise, would register as outrageously comedic. Darling! Darling, tell me, tell me all about yourself. Who are you? The availability of sound and the use of dialogue and music took the pressure off the images, put some of the significant amount of the narrative and dramatic and emotional weight on sound. Maybe someday after I've paid for what I did, there'll be a chance to begin again. And then maybe Catherine and I. Joe. And therefore, let filmmakers create more neutral images, make small fluctuations in the variety of images, right. and in performance, tell very dramatically. You know, they used to call the, the early sound equipment a sound truck. It was almost like the size of a small U-Haul or a big desk. Films such as Primary by Robert Drew. You look awfully satisfied right now, Senator. The Salesman by the Maisel's Brothers. There are many people who know the bike, but you're somewhat different. You know the business. These films would not have been possible without this technology. Right, and, it's, and cinema verite is also about this investigative mode because you're right in it, right? And so not having the intimacy of people actually speaking and being able to pick up their voices at the moment would completely ruin that quality. What the availability of direct sound brought to dramatic filmmaking was the possibility of integrating something documentary-like you could film on location and get the voices, the actual voices of the actors who are speaking. Right. If it didn't appeal to you, you could always dub. Help me out, man. No, I can't do it, bro. You gotta keep it moving, bro. I can't do Come it right on, now, bro. Man. Police out here, man. Keep it moving, bro. This is good, man. How you good with you? The opening shot of Barry Jenkins is Moonlight, which is both one of the greatest opening shots in the history of cinema and one of the greatest steady cam shots ever realized. I thought it was an incredible scene in showing this world. It's so small yet so large. When do you remember it first being used? I don't know if I personally remember it first right. being used. <laughs> I think Rocky. I think the steps. Right. In Rocky. The Philadelphia steps. I think it's really interesting to consider what the Steadicam essentially replaced, namely tracking rail. It was very time consuming, very expensive, very cumbersome. Once Steadicam came in, it was essentially a one person operation. You didn't have to consider the shot too hard, you were just going to do the Steadicam shot. Exactly. Have you ever met one of your internet girlfriends? I've, I've never had any internet girlfriends. Joe Swanberg, I think, is, is a major reference for this kind of filmmaking. He was able to make his first couple of films for just a few thousand dollars. Right. Kissing on the Mouth, and uh, especially LOL, which is, to begin with, the film that gave the world the cinematic presence of Greta Gerwig. Due to technology, his career has really gone from small to a much larger reach. Suddenly, a new generation of filmmakers was able to make films more cheaply than ever. This is America. Ooh. 
Don't catch you slipping now. Don't catch you slipping now. Donald Glover's This Is America. It turns the camera back to the viewer, right? It's about how we are interacting with this thing. And music videos are so easy to consume, and they're free. They're also their own form of cinema. It's also true that the internet has greatly changed the way that filmmakers and viewers interact with each other. I think it's changed the millennial relationship to what film is or to what cinema is. There's a much more casual or open relationship to it. If you follow independent filmmaking, if you watch music videos, you can see that very simple creations can have the grand scale, historic, emotional power of any film in the history of cinema. Right, and that's maybe what they don't want you to know. <laughs> <laughs>